Hello there, it's Austin, and today we're going to be brewing a full grain batch to make literally this one pint of Mirzen. And it's going to be a huge waste of time. We'll start by collecting our filtered water. Uh, we need less than a gallon for this batch, so not very much at all. I'll start a timer because one of the goals of this batch was to see how quickly we can get through it. After measuring out the water in a one gallon pot, we'll turn on the stove, and before we know it, we're already at our temperature of 149 Fahrenheit. At this point, I'll go ahead and measure out my grains. We'll be using 9 ounces of Munich malt. And once it's measured out, we'll go ahead and grind it up with our comically oversized grain mill for this size batch. About at the 10 minute mark, we're ready for mash in. I'm adding the grains right to the water without a filter or a bag or anything. I'll just use a kitchen strainer to filter it later. I also added in my brewing salts at this point, mainly because I forgot to do it earlier. My stove kept the mash right at temperature on the low setting, which is where we'll leave it for our 30 minute abbreviated mash. At this point, it's time to filter the grains out with the earlier mentioned kitchen strainer and then bring the wort to boil back on the stove. We'll be adding a hardworking three and a half grams of Hallertau Mittelfru hops to this batch That'll bring us up to around 21 IBUs. Right at the one hour mark in our process, we're ready to let the wort boil for 30 minutes. So grab a seat or enjoy some time outside. In the last few minutes of the boil, we'll add the immersion chiller to make sure it's sanitized before cutting off the heat and starting the chilling process. Once the wort is down to temperature, we'll check the gravity out to see how well our new system performed. Since a hydrometer uses a couple ounces to test the beer's gravity, and we only made a couple of ounces, we'll use a refractometer to test instead. In my experience, my refractometer isn't quite as accurate as my hydrometer, but it did its job in showing us that we very much missed our gravity targets. Once we've adjusted our expectations, it's time to add the wort to the two liter bottle that we'll be using as a fermenter. After a second attempt of transferring our wort with a more secured bottle, it's time to pitch our yeast. I'm using a harvested German lager yeast and way over pitching because I'll be fermenting this a little warmer than I would traditionally ferment a lager. At the hour and 45 minute mark, all of our brewing processes are done. I'm using a carbonation cap to seal the fermenter and a gas ball lock connection with some tubing to create an airlock. This will also be useful later for carbonating and transferring our finished beer. I let the beer ferment at room temperature for about two weeks. I enjoyed getting to watch the fermentation process throughout those two weeks. I love my stainless tanks, but you don't get an opportunity to see yeast at work. I didn't test final gravity, but once I was pretty sure that the beer had had enough time to finish, I transferred to a 20 ounce PET bottle with that same carbonation cap and connected it at 15 PSI for a week. At this point, the one pint all grain batch of Mirzen was done. Time to pour it into our new five minute brewery glass and enjoy. Final thoughts on the one pint of Mirzen. Honestly, as far as the beer itself goes, it's fine. It tastes like a Mirzen, which is good. It's got good malty flavors and, and um, the hops kind of come through, which is nice. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't taste a whole lot like Martzen's I've made on my larger system, which was kind of the point of this experiment to see if I could replicate a recipe um, that tastes similar to my larger size system on a much smaller scale and take much less time. Uh, it only took two thirds of the amount of time, so it didn't save me a whole lot and the yield is much less, so um, probably wouldn't do it again. Plus there there is a, something going on in here, maybe like a caramelized bacon, like a sugar-free syrup thing. Maybe it came from the pot that I used being the same pot that we make dinner with, or the bottle that I carbonated in being the same bottle that had a Diet Coke two hours before. But overall, it was still fun and uh, an interesting way to, to spend an hour and 45 minutes. Cheers.